Hi, and thanks for tuning in for today's Connect Video Tuesday, June 22nd. And uh, I think we're through the hottest week we've had for quite a while, so it's good to be back to normal hot uh, here. Um, a couple quick things. Singspiration coming up, July 4th edition. Um, Saturday, July 3rd, 4 p.m. in Chapel Hall. So great opportunity to get together and have a great time for praise and worship uh, around our Independence Day. So that's uh, Saturday, July 3rd, 4 p.m. in Chapel Hall. Also, summer barbecues are going on, a number of them still happening through August. Um, so a great way to connect with others in the church. Uh, so, so please make sure you you sign up for one of those if you're not already signed up. And uh, um, have a great time with people, having some good food and, and good company. So uh, the summer barbecues are intentional for us so we can um, reconnect post-COVID, get to know some people maybe we don't know, those kinds of things. So great opportunity there. Let me share a couple of jokes. Hope you had a great Father's Day, by the way, for all of you men out there, fathers. One of my Father's Day gifts is in the back here. Dad jokes told here. So here we go. <laughs> um, just a reminder, I screen these jokes. I'm not sharing every one of them in this book that I got for Christmas. And uh, so, so I'm only picking the good ones. So some days it, it's rough. This might be one of them. Um, I'm reading a book about anti-gravity, and I just can't seem to put it down. <laughs> yeah. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Ten tickles. I kind of gave you a warning about the jokes today, so. <laughs> All right. I want to talk about stress today. Stress. You ever get stressed out? Ugh. Our dog's name is Bella. I've shared with Bella a little bit before. Yesterday was her veterinarian appointment, getting her vaccines and some of the, you know, the normal, normal things. Now, I've shared before how, how Bella is very uh, skittish. Uh, a bit jumpy, hides when the, you know, um, coffee grinder comes out, she hides, furniture polish spray, she hides, right? She's been that way from day one when we picked her up from the, um, from the pound. At first, she was very fearful of everyone. Um, and that's sometimes to be expected when you pick up a dog from the, the pound and don't know what the history is there, but, um, that changed quickly with her. In fact, she loves people now more than other dogs. So she's very much a people dog, if you will. Um, but when, when we go to the vet, um, she's in full anxiety mode when we go to the vet. Uh, stressed out is an understatement uh, for her. She was so tensed up yesterday that the vet could not even um, feel around her stomach and ribs and everything, how they do kind of a normal check at the vet appointments because Bella was so tight and tense um, that she, she couldn't feel anything except the muscle, right? And uh, dogs shed their hair hair in clumps when they're stressed. And there was, her, Bella's fur was everywhere in this room yesterday. It's just like pouring out of her almost. And last year I, I told Kim, uh, after a number of years of taking Bella on my own, I told her, I'm not taking that dog to the vet anymore by myself. It's too embarrassing. So from now on, either you're taking her or you're going to go with me. So uh, we had a tandem effort yesterday there with Bella. And um, while we were at the vet, I could not help but think, when we encounter life and the unexpected turns of life, how many of us start stressing out like Bella does at the vet? How does a follower of Christ... How does being a follower of Christ impact or affect my stress level and the frequency of my stressed out moments? Uh, Jesus talked about this in the Sermon on the Mount. He has a large section there, actually, um, in Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34. Uh, in your Bible, if you look there, it's probably titled, Do Not Be Anxious. That whole section is Jesus talking about this topic 
of being anxious or worrying or stressed out, right? And uh, there's a few things I just want to point out real quick here. A little, some stress pointers, I guess you could say, um, that can help you when you deal with stress. Number one is you are precious to God. You're precious to God. It's about identity and knowing you're loved by Almighty God. Verse 26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? In verse 32, Your Heavenly Father knows that you need them all. I'm talking about clothing and food and things like that. Um, why is it important to know that, that you're precious in God's sight? Be because you can trust that He is aware of the situation. He's taking care of you. His plan is moving to completion. He's doing something, and, and he's, he's on your side. You're his child. Number two, worry, stressing out, doesn't help solve the problem. Jesus is very practical in this section. He's extremely practical. Um, he, he's always extremely practical, but, but here it's very, very like just down to earth. Stressing out doesn't solve the problem. Verse 27, And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? <laughs> it's just straight on, isn't it? How does stressing out, worrying, or being anxious, playing the what-if game, how do these things help the situation? We know they actually can cause harm and be a negative influence in the situation, right? We get unruly. We get mean. We get short with people. We snap at them, right? We may get depressed, we may get angry, we may get sad, we lose focus on everything else and get obsessed with the thing we're stressing about. How, how, do, how does stressing out, worrying, help you? Well, it helps me prepare for what might happen. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> because we usually worry about what might happen. It's the what-if game, right? But what, what we, you know, the, when we play the what-if game, what we're worried about usually never happens. The what if game is a fictional game, right? So it really doesn't help. It just adds more difficulty and causes many problems. Number three, a lack of faith leads to worry and stress. In verse 30, he says, Oh, you of little faith. So he, he points out that faith, a lack of faith, weak faith is the problem. It's kind of a verbal slap in the face from Jesus, right? That worry is a lack of faith in God. And number four is actually the solution or the application here. This is, this is the solution to your stress. Okay, listen up. No, here's the solution to your stress. Keep your focus on God, not on the problems. Keep your focus on God, not on the problems. Verse 33 and 34, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, don't be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is Jesus' Jesus's solution to our stress and our worry, to focus on God, to pursue God and pursue obedience. And when we do that, our focus will be on the right things. And he adds another application, don't stress about long-term problems or possibilities. Keep your focus on today. Seek God today. Live in obedience today. And that will help you apply wisdom for today, which will then, when you think about it, it will help you avoid problems both today and tomorrow. And when you have less problems, you have less stress. One final word. Um, life does come with problems and pain and difficulties. And one more thing for us to do here is, is pray. Hebrews 4, verse 16, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This really goes right along with Jesus' solution, right? The focus on God, seek first his kingdom. This is about prayer. Prayer would be involved with that, but this is a little more blatant, I think, and, and obvious for us, which is why I want to make it its own point. Focusing on God, on God, seeking God involves prayer. In times of need, times of pain, pray. And the writer of Hebrews tells us when we do that, we will find the mercy and grace we need in that moment.
Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are always there, that you are never changing, that you love us, that we are your children, and you're always aware of everything in life. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to never let the problems of life become bigger than you. And may we trust you in all difficulties and live with joy and not stress. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome week this week. We'll see you on Sunday uh, at 9.30 or 11 in person or on the live stream at 9.30. Have a great week. Bye-bye.